Welcome back clinical problem solvers. Today we're going to talk about anisocoria, unequal pupils. I am Dr. Aaron Berkowitz's voice today. He has an incredible book. Highly recommend you purchase it. Link in description below. Unequal pupils. Before we can talk about the causes of unequal pupils, we first have to understand neuroanatomy. What actually controls the pupil size? Two nerves, cranial nerve three and the oculosympathetic nerve. Cranial nerve 3C constricts the pupil, meiosis. It also elevates the eyelid and it's involved in extraocular movements. It's important to remember the other function of this nerve. The sympathetic nerve, what does it do? Right now, there's a little cat there named Sydney and he's going to attack me. I'm going to be wide eyed with fear. So my pupils are dilated, my eyelid is elevated, and I'm sweating out of nervousness and I'm ready to take off. It's important to realize that cranial nerve 3 has more of a prominent role in eyelid elevation than the sympathetic nerve. Before we talk about how do you recognize which one is the abnormal pupil? Is it the larger pupil? Is it the smaller pupil? It's good to review a few possibilities of anisocoria that, that are not related to lesions in CN3 pathway or the oculosympathetic pathway. One is physiologic anisocoria. This is benign. It doesn't involve the eyelids. There is no abnormal extraocular movements or impaired sweating. It's just asymmetric pupils, slightly different. They react appropriately to light. How will you know? Often patients might not know this. You can look at a prior picture on their phone or look at their driver's license to see if it was present. Other reasons, could be intentional. What if an ophthalmologist wanted to do a fundoscopic exam and they dilated the pupil? That's intentional. And so you might have asymmetric pupil size. Or what if someone comes in with wheezing, is on ipratropium nebulizer, and unfortunately it's blowing in one of their eyes. Ipratropium, anticholinergic property. Cranial nerve three carries parasympathetic fibers that release acetylcholine to cause what? To cause meiosis. If you have anticholinergic and you're blocking the acetylcholine, boom, you can have a dilated pupil with ipratropium. A scopalamine can also do the scopalamine patch. So, step one, ask the question, is there physiologic anisocoria? Of course, this won't be in a patient with other neurologic findings. Have they been exposed to a med intentionally or inadvertently? Okay. Let's say there isn't physiologic anisocoria. They haven't been exposed to a med. Now we gotta first identify which one is the abnormal pupil before we can talk about the DDX because we're trying to localize the lesion. Is it cranial nerve three or is it the oculosympathetic pathway? Really what you wanna do is see how the pupils react to light and darkness based on everything we just discussed. If I told you this was the response to light, which pupil is abnormal? Take it one step further. Where would you localize the lesion? Cranial nerve three or the oculosympathetic pathway? What do you want your eyes to do to light? Like right now, all this light is coming into my eyes. What are my pupils gonna do? They're gonna wanna constrict, it's too much light. Let's decrease the amount of light that's coming back. So normal, with light, you'd expect pupils to constrict. This is normal, this is the abnormal pupil. It didn't constrict. If the pupil didn't constrict, where is the lesion? Cranial nerve three constricts. So something is going on with cranial nerve three. We just localized the lesion, then we can talk about etiologies. Causes can be things like a posterior communicating artery aneurysm which impinges on cranial nerve three this is one example a true concern would be uncle herniation where you got a dilated pupil it's blown out not responding to light and the eye is down and out and you have prominent ptosis note i didn't just say go and look for ptosis because sometimes ptosis is not obvious or if someone has ptosis it has nothing to do with these pathways but it's a different cause of ptosis so ptosis only helps you 
really identify the lesion, but you can't just use it alone. So this is the abnormal eye. It's cranial nerve three. I would expect ptosis here and impaired eye movements. And common examples can be uncle herniation, which is devastating, or there can be a posterior communicating artery aneurysm causing a cranial nerve three pathology. Now, this is exposure to dark in a different patient, which is the abnormal pupil. To answer this, what should your eyes do in dark? The pupils should dilate. They're trying to allow more light in. So the pupil that doesn't dilate is the abnormal one right here. It didn't dilate. Which nerve is involved in dilating my dryasis, wide-eyed with fear? The sympathetic nerve. So we know we got something going on with the oculosympathetic pathway. There, and this is referred to as Horner syndrome, by the way, the ptosis, the meiosis, and the lack of sweating. It just goes back, wide-eyed with fear and sweat. So what can cause this? You need to know the pathway of the oculosympathetic pathway. And I'm not gonna talk about the first order, second order, and third order neuron. Just know it originates in the hypothalamus as it's swinging up over the lung apex. So if you have a pancos tumor, you can get Horner syndrome because you're interrupting the oculosympathetic pathway. Or if you go up a little more and you have an internal carotid artery dissection, boom, you can get isolated Horner syndrome. The other causes of Horner syndrome in the schema below are not gonna be isolated Horners. There's gonna be other findings. And finally, you can have anisocoria from migraine and seizure. What can't those two conditions do? So if I were to summarize it here, Two nerves involved. Cranial nerve three constricts the pupil. The oculosympathetic pathway dilates the pupil. Note that there is such a thing as physiologic anisocoria. Make sure there haven't been any meds that the patient has been exposed to. If you're really dealing with just isolated, if you're dealing with um, pupillary abnormalities, you gotta identify which one is the abnormal pupil. And the reaction to light versus dark will help you localize the abnormal pupil, will help you pinpoint the site of pathology, and from there you can then activate the DDX that we discussed.